Hi. I'm going to be narrowcasting a little bit with this one. This is not a video about Steven Crowder, really. It's a video about freedom of speech and what that means and how to protect it. And when I say that, maybe you think you know what I mean. A lot of people have a certain take on this subject. The idea that, although we may not like Steven Crowder's shitty behavior, we must defend his right to perform it on YouTube, lest they crack down on us later. If we demand YouTube do something about harassment on its platform, we're handing over the reins of censorship to an evil corporation. That is not my position. That is actually the position I intend to rebut with this video. That received wisdom, I feel, is naivety disguising itself as cynicism. It takes for granted a lot of things that complicate that simple narrative, namely that YouTube already has that horrific power, already wields it against us, and doesn't benefit when we demand that they use it to protect its users. But let me just step back for a second and explain the situation to the two or three not extremely online people in the audience who might not know what I'm even referring to. Steven Crowder, the living meme right-wing comedian, is currently under fire for a small selection of the extremely homophobic comments he's made over the years. And by under fire, I mean the subject of some pretty even-keeled criticism. On May 30th, Vox columnist Carlos Maza wrote a Twitter thread detailing some of the harassment he has received at the hands of Crowder's fans, after Crowder made some pretty fucking gross comments about him. Repeatedly. Over the course of several years. Crowder has called Carlos, quote, a lispy queer, an anchor baby, and told him he's been given a free pass for being a crappy writer because he's gay. Maza has been doxxed by Crowder's fanboys and, all around, been made to feel pretty unsafe by YouTube's refusal to enforce its own rules against harassment. YouTube's response was... indelicate. They decided that Crowder's direct targeted harassment of a gay man on their platform was uncomfortable, but ultimately permissible. As an open platform, it's crucial for us to allow everyone from creators to journalists to late night TV hosts to express their opinions within the scope of our policies. Opinions could be deeply offensive, but if they don't violate our policies, they'll remain on our site. That's interesting to me. It makes me wonder if YouTube's harassment policies are publicly available and directly contradict what they're saying and oh hey, would you look at that, they do! Content or behavior intended to maliciously harass, threaten, or bully others is not allowed on YouTube. Now, I get it. This is a pretty fine line. Who knows the exact moment that gentle mockery and joking around turns into bullying. I don't know where the boundary is. And I think there are a lot of edge cases we could have a debate about. But this isn't one of them. This violence, filth. Okay, so the little queer could eat his chips all nonchalantly. It's code for rape, Mr. Queer <laughs> eating chips on the Vox channel. <laughs> chip, 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 but you can eat just one. Like dicks. <laughs> this is what Mr. Gay Vox wants to do. Mr. Le Token Vox Gay Atheist Sprite with surprisingly, surprisingly flaccid chest considering how thin he is. It is. If this is not bullying, then the word bullying doesn't mean anything. This is so cut and dry. He, what would he have to do to be more of a bully than this? Like, threaten to take Carlos Maza's fucking lunch money? YouTube's definition of bullying that they themselves offered in this very same document is behavior intended to humiliate someone else. So, I think it definitely is intended to do that. Also, it also violates their rules against hate speech, which include using stereotypes that incite or promote hatred based on any of the attributes noted above, one of which is sexual orientation. This can take the form of speech, text, or imagery promoting these stereotypes or treating them as factual. You know, like the stereotype that gay men are very promiscuous and have to put a bunch of dicks in their mouth, like that kind of stereotype? <laughs> chip, 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 but you can eat just one, like dicks. And in case all of that wasn't enough, eagle-eyed viewers might notice that Crowder was wearing a t-shirt with a photo of Che Guevara waving a limp wrist with the tag, socialism is for f Also available as a onesie for babies, so. YouTube is not only okay with hate speech on its platform, it's okay with hate speech being literally printed onto babies. Just in case anyone was curious how cartoonishly permissible this platform is allowing itself to be. Side note, a lot of nincompoops are trying to insist that the shirt actually says socialism is for figs, because the place where Che Guevara was killed, they grew a lot of figs there. Now I know the people making this argument are not being honest. 
but uh, let's just nip it in the bud and point out that were they actually saying figs, they wouldn't censor the word figs, you absolute diaper clowns. Don't worry though, YouTube sprang into action when they were criticized for this and decided to demonetize Steven Crowder's channel. A harsh punishment to be sure, one that YouTube typically reserves for LGBTQ content. They've been demonetized for years, and they don't have thousands of dollars a year's worth of grifting oops I mean merchandising opportunities like Crowder does. Also, they don't get their monetization back if they just stop selling their homophobic shirts. Also, they don't deserve to be demonetized because they're not being hateful. They're being LGBTQ, which is normal and cool. The punishment that YouTube devised for bigotry against LGBTQ people was to treat the bigot like LGBTQ people, except less severely. So, happy Pride Month, everybody. Look, they made the play button a rainbow. Our heroes. There, that's the basic thing that happened. You've probably already heard about it. That's what it is. Look, Crowder is a ding dong. He will do as a ding dong does. Maza doesn't actually place the blame on Crowder. He places it correctly on YouTube. And I'm not disappointed in YouTube, not because they did anything right in this situation, or even did anything like not completely chowderbrained. I'm not disappointed because I would never in a million years expect YouTube to behave any differently than it's doing right now. Their policies in terms of service aren't put in place to protect vulnerable people. They're public relations memos that disguise their complete disinterest in their users' safety behind hand-wavy nice ideas that make them sound like an institution that gives even a single solitary shit about you. They do not. They are our enemies. And I don't mean simply the enemies of LGBTQ plus people and their allies, though to be clear, they are, and that alone would be bad enough. I mean, they, like any other business under capitalism, are not designed to provide a service or to enrich the lives of their customers. They are designed with a singular focus of extracting the maximum profit humanly possible and will pursue that goal no matter the cost to anyone else. YouTube is a plundering machine. I don't expect them to look out for our best interests or to behave according to any sort of coherent ethical standard beyond their immediate self-interest. YouTube is not our ally in this or any fight against oppression because, like any power structure in capitalism, it benefits from that oppression and always will. They can monetize that oppression. They can use that oppression to generate value for themselves. When people resist that oppression, they can monetize that too. Ain't life grand for them. And all they have to do to keep people from being pissed about it is every once in a while say that they're going to reevaluate their policies or make a statement about how intolerance is not welcome in the community and hapless dumb fuck liberals will heap praise upon them. After all, intolerance is the result of a few bad eggs like Crowder. It has nothing to do with the systems and businesses that profit from those bad eggs. Suffice to say, I thought YouTube's response was predictable. But something that surprised me, something that made me pretty mad actually, was a common reaction I saw from a lot of leftists on Reddit. They argued that if we allow YouTube, a big evil corporation, to censor Steven Crowder, they'll abuse that precedent to come for leftist channels next. If we allow them to silence voices we don't approve of simply for violating their rules and direct targeted harassment, they'll come for us. Therefore, we must continue to allow this abuse as much as it may pain us, and outcompete it with our superior, tolerant ideas. First they came for the bullies, and I was not a bully. That take is bad. I hate this take. I will now demonstrate the problems of this take, thereby eviscerating it with facts and logic. YouTube does not need an excuse to demonetize leftist content. YouTube, the company, a subsidiary of Google, a subsidiary of Alphabet, a subsidiary of Nintendo, owns YouTube, the website, the platform, where you're watching this video right now. They make the rules, they enforce the rules, and nothing, literally not a single goddamn thing they do with it, is within our control. When it comes to what happens on YouTube, they have all of the power, and they can do whatever they want. Now, that sucks donkey ass, but it's reality. Let's say I'm John YouTube, the chief intergagement officer of YouTube. I decide that, you know what, all of these commies are cramping my style. They're not worth the measly little ad revenue they bring in because they might inspire the proletariat to rise up against us and take my cool website and make it better for everybody, and then I can't make any money from it. They don't need and aren't going to wait for an excuse when they feel that leftist content is too dangerous for their bottom line, and make no mistake, 
that day will come. They'll just do it. They won't justify it. They won't admit they're doing it. They'll just make some changes to their TOS and then just delete willy-nilly. And you can bet your buns it won't generate angry statements from the media or Ted Cruz about how we have to protect freedom of speech. There won't be a backlash. It's a perfectly safe thing for them to do. See, what you have to understand is that the right-wing outrage machine is finely tuned to protect all manner of abusive ding-dongery. These astroturfed phonies come together in rhetorical lockstep, not because they understand the importance of solidarity better than the left does or whatever, but because they're all funded by the same few rich ghouls. They all have the same few pet causes. There is no leftist billionaire equivalent pumping out like Marxist agitprop because billionaires have no interest in destroying the mechanisms by which they became billionaires. So when Crowder finds himself in a bit of a pickle and He's being criticized by leftos. He has a bunch of other powerful media figures and outlets that have a vested interest in protecting him. If, say, Sean Skull came under similar criticism, there are no magazines or advertisers that give even the slightest shit. The use of leftists to these platforms is that we occasionally generate clicks. You clicked on this video. That's it. But rightos? They have millions of dollars in think tank money. They spend millions on advertising on these platforms, including on leftist videos. So even the leftist videos are only useful to YouTube as long as the right wing says they are. They rake in tremendous amounts of sticky, icky cashish in the forms of donations and brand deals. To put it bluntly, they're just a whole hell of a lot more profitable. If you cave to right wing pressure to ban leftist content, you might make a few communists angry. Big deal. Communists already don't like you, you big rich jerk. I'm a communist. I can confirm. I hate your guts. But if you cave to left-wing pressure to ban right-wing content, you make advertisers and investors angry. Which do you think factors more heavily into YouTube's decision-making process? There's no risk in shutting down leftist speech, or even just any speech critical of the right online. Want to know how I know that? Tech companies do it all the fucking time. Right now. Already. YouTube and other tech companies are already silencing dissident media. In the wake of Crowdergate, YouTube was desperate to convince people they were taking the threat of hate speech on their platform seriously. But at the same time, they were also desperate to not have to do anything and to not have to spend any money. Their response was to algorithmically search for and automatically delete hate speech based on certain signifiers. Can you guess what happened? It started flagging things which attempted to respond to or educate people about hate speech. Like this video from Max Blumenthal tackling the Holocaust revisionism of man ghoul David Irving. In one case, they deleted a response to Steven Crowder. During one of the brief breaks he took in between hate speech outbursts to simply be wrong instead of wrong and hateful. This video by Progress Voice attempted to respond to Crowder's misattribute misattrib misattributing of a quote by Gregor Strasser to Adolf Hitler. The, the video by Crowder, with the same subject matter, just, you know, with the details wrong, didn't get touched. So for those of you keeping score, YouTube's response to someone being a bully and a bigot on their platform was to create a method to silence people that criticized him, but leave his speech untouched. And still, he complains that he's being censored, and still, there's outrage on his behalf. I saw maybe two tweets about Progress Voice's video before it was reinstated. Now, I get it. Progress Voice is a small little channel, but one would think that if this were actually about free speech or whatever, people would be angrier about the little guy actually getting silenced rather than the millionaire no longer getting paid to speak. Or how about the time that Tim Pool and the alt-right creeps in his orbit managed to get anarchist news site It's Going Down taken off of Patreon? Do you want to know where I learned about that? from its going down, not from fucking Forbes. And speaking from a more personal place, just look at all the videos that YouTube thoughtlessly deletes after mass flagging campaigns by right-wing trolls. Everyone from Sean Skull to Three Arrows to motherfucking Big Joel of all people have had videos removed and had to fight like hell to get them put back up. Think about the smaller channels without a big audience or community behind them that had this happen to them and nobody even knew. The chuds won't mass flag me though, no matter how hard I try to bait them into it. Obviously, they're afraid of me and my enormous muscles.
that's not even getting into all the state-sanctioned repression of leftists that's well documented. Corporations could just lean on something like that. COINTELPRO, the House on American Activities Committee, just straight up murdering people like they did to Fred Hampton. There's no shortage of ways to shut up inconvenient leftists when they get too close to teaching people subversive ideas. We don't gots to get hate speech removed from YouTube for them to start silencing leftist voices. They're just going to do that either way. But okay, maybe the far right will go tit for tat and demand we silence leftist voices for retaliation. In fact, they always do. In fact, a lot of the examples I cited were them doing exactly that. They will fight back, and in a lot of cases, they will fuck us over. And we should fight them anyway. It's worth the risk. Anything cool or good we can possibly do will be met with retaliation from reactionaries. That is a fact of life. Now, maybe that's not worth it for you personally. Maybe you're in a vulnerable position and can't afford to open yourself up to that kind of risk, and that's fair enough. For everyone else, for people like me, you don't give in to bullies. It will never make them stop. It makes them bolder. Fighting back isn't guaranteed to make them stop either, but it's a whole hell of a lot more likely to. Getting hate speech taken off one of the largest media platforms on Earth, responsible for 11.4 of all web traffic globally, is a fight worth having. Not just because we don't like hate speech, or because we have a difference of opinion, but because it causes real harm to real people. Let's not forget, this whole controversy started because a gay man complained that every time one of these videos gets posted, he gets loads of harassment. He got doxxed. Should we just tell him to ignore that? To suck it up? Is that the type of community we want to be? Are we so afraid of what our enemies will do if we stand up to them that we're willing to preemptively roll over and throw vulnerable people under the bus to protect our own asses? Good fucking luck getting them to risk their lives in our revolution when we won't risk our fucking YouTube monetization to protect them. Allowing that type of harassment, those kinds of threats, to go unchallenged presents the real danger to freedom of speech. It is a clear and deliberate attempt to make the platform, and by extension, the discourse, and by extension, the world, more hostile and dangerous for gay people. To make them too scared of retaliation to speak up. Making a mockery of their sexuality normalized and demonstrating to them that nobody will stand up on their behalf. And if we refuse to advocate for the powerless because we're afraid of what the powerful might do to us if we do, we're proving them right. Letting that continue is not a victory for freedom of speech. It is a dereliction of our duty to protect the speech and safety of vulnerable people in our community. Oh, and also, freedom of speech does not guarantee you freedom to a platform. Hey, can I come into your house and talk for six hours about how ugly your mother is? No? Why not? I thought we cared about freedom of speech. I thought that's what this whole thing was about, right? You know, come to think of it, I've never been published in the New York Times. DC Comics has continuously rejected my pitch for a comic where Batman is real and my dad, and he tells me he's proud of me. Despite having more than 200 YouTube subscribers, I have not once been invited to perform at Carnegie Hall. None of these institutions have platformed me. Am I being censored? Make no mistake, I believe Crowder has the right to say whatever he wants, to believe whatever he believes, to be as hateful and unfunny as he wants. I think pretty much everybody agrees with that. I do not believe he is entitled to do it on any platform he so desires. I do not believe we owe it to him to allow him to amplify his messaging with whatever tools he wants to use. Freedom of speech is a human right. Freedom to have a YouTube channel ain't. You can have your YouTube channel deleted if you use too much copyrighted music. I don't hear anyone talking about the freedom of speech implications of that, but when it comes to hate speech, suddenly everyone is a fucking human rights scholar. Give me a break. Ah, but Thought Slime, you hamburger. YouTube and other social media platforms have such a monopoly that by all rights, they should be treated like the digital commons. And I can't say that I agree with that. They should be seized by the people, dismantled and replaced with a more egalitarian alternative. But I get your point. Yes, big companies like YouTube do sort of resemble a digital commons. And removing one's ability to use them is like kicking somebody out of a public place, like, say, a public park. Now... 
Let's imagine that I followed around Carlos Mauza in a public park, mocking his sexuality for years, and every time I did, a bunch of people joined in and made the park a nightmare for him, and then occasionally followed him home to demand that he debate me. People would be within their rights to try to get me banned from the park, because I'm making the park unsafe for other people in the park. Now, do I think YouTube should get to decide who can and cannot use their platform? Absolutely not. But right now, they sure do get to control that, and if we don't keep constant, immediate pressure on them to use that power in ways that are safe for us, they'll just do whatever they want to do. Whatever they judge to be best for their bottom line, and that sure as hell ain't gonna be good for us. This was never a fight about freedom of speech. This was a fight about marginalized people demanding that huge institutions who have enormous power over them don't leave them vulnerable to abuse. I understand why people make this argument. I really do. I agree with a lot of the logic that builds up to it. We shouldn't hand over the power to censor public discourse to YouTube. That's a horrifying dystopian idea. But that ship has sailed. They have that power, and they've had it for a long time. I want very badly to take that power away from them. I don't like the idea that a bunch of shareholders in a fancy room somewhere get any say in what 11.4% of web traffic looks like. It enrages me. I live for the day that we strip them of their power and seize control of the apparatuses that they have used to accrue that power. And that day will come. But it's not here yet. So if we sit back and let them use that power however they please with absolutely no pushback, with no outcry, that only makes their grip over us stronger. YouTube doesn't want us able to challenge their decisions, to make thousands of people mad about the lawful exercise of their absolute power. They want us to be quiet. You're not taking anything away from them by letting them continue hosting hate speech. They are not made more powerful when you fight to get that hate speech removed. If it benefited YouTube to remove hate speech, they would have done it already. It's not what they want. They like having the hate speech there, because they make money from it. They might get rid of a token hate speech pigeon every now and then, but in the long run, they like having the hate speech. You're deluding yourself if you believe that sitting this fight out, or worse yet, defending Crowder, makes this platform safer, more open, or less dominated by rich ghouls. That's precisely what they're counting on you to do. Don't expect them to give you points for good behavior when it's your turn against the chopping block. I share your concern that they will crack down on leftist content in some both sides bullshit to dodge controversy. They're going to crack down on us anyway, right? Why give them a reason? But frankly, if we're not willing to fight for the powerless in all circumstances, if we're not brave enough to use our platforms to defend people when they're being abused because we're afraid of what we might personally lose in the process, then we have no business making leftist content in the first place. Oh, and uh, I guess I should just say this. Everyone who disagrees with me is a Nazi and hate speech just means any speech I don't agree with. There, have fun comment section. Just go to town. Pretend I meant that. Have a blast, you little scamps. Hey everybody, I hope you're not too mad at me after this video. If you're not mad, why don't you head on over to patreon.com slash thoughtslime where people go to give me money for this. You can also like and subscribe to the, to the channel and you can click the little bell icon. That's going to tell you uh, when, uh, when the videos come out. That's a thing YouTube does on its platform. It's another good decision they made. You can catch me live streaming every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Trying out some different games nowadays. Tried Baba as you, didn't like it. Liked the game, didn't like playing it on stream. Because it made me look foolish. I hope I didn't say ding dong too much in this video because I don't want it to overstay its welcome.